yeah, starting this thing off, how would you describe what exactly it is that you do? This sends me back a bit. <laughs> this was this question was always putting me a bit off in the past, actually. It's, it's a it's a fun one. What do you do or where do you come from? They're all both kind of they relate. We're, we're doing something, we're doing something to me. Yeah, I remember it reminds me. Many years ago I found myself in Bali and and, and Things shifted dramatically um, over the year before for me and this question. And all I had to say always was um, nothing. What do you do? Um, nothing. And I didn't really understand what that means. But I, of course, it puts people a bit off. So I, I stopped saying that. <laughs> but somehow it comes it comes back now. I, I didn't understand. But somehow this, this settling... Settling in myself, this unchanging center, if you want to call it, kind of brought about this answer that uh, I didn't really understand, but um, I just felt I, I I stopped doing, you know, I've been joking for many years, actually, that around that time, I feel I have um, retired, you see, mm -hmm. it's this, this sense of, um, so it's still a bit the same when you ask me like that. Sometimes maybe I, what I'm saying sometimes now in these um, meetings, simply being myself possibly hits hits that most. You know, just um, not trying to be something, not trying to achieve something, not trying to change something. The the the, the freedom. And to just being myself, to be ourselves in a way, if you want to call it doing, you know, mirroring that back in a way, this happiness that is that is our nature, that is so associated somehow with this simply being ourselves. It's kind of all what we really, I feel, want to be. Just, just normally our. Being is so conditioned with all these filters, how we, you know, through society, school, our parents, all of that, well, how we have to be and we try to, to do our best to achieve somehow this impossible task to bring this puzzle together to, to be according how, it, how we're meant to be according to society and, and all of that. And we never find really peace in that because it's it's so many conflicting positions that yeah. try to be united as a as a personality as a person to to achieve that so we're always kind of ripped apart so i feel that's um what i'm doing what i am just simply being myself and then over the years somehow People come and somehow have a sense that this is that this is happiness. Yeah. To, to be that. And then somehow over over many years without me actually looking for anything, just meeting people in a cafe and here and there and just um, being kind of retired jokingly, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. somehow started to get attracted to that. So in a way we could say I, I try to share how to how to rip off all those filters, all those limitations that, that doesn't belong to us, that kind of make us feel unfree and and and, and constrained our, our freedom in a way. So mm. I started um, sharing that. But it's a foolish, foolish thing, really. I'm, I'm very aware that that's, it's hard for me to say that I do anything because um, even to, to start speaking about that is... This being ourselves is what we are. So there's nothing to do. You see, there's nothing, nothing to really teach, even. No? Yeah, it's just our nature. 
Mm -hmm. I get you. So let me ask you about the limitations that constrict us. What would you say are some of the biggest limitations that keep us from feeling the sense of happiness or freedom in our lives? Like really, what holds us back the most, you know? It's very simple. It's just the belief to be an individual, separate person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apart from other people, apart from nature, an individual consciousness separate from other consciousnesses. Mm -hmm. All limitations are built upon that one. Yeah. And would you say that's from our desires and essentially our individual desires are what uphold that illusion of separateness in our lives probably a wooden frame like that for me desire is nothing bad or nothing in the way to be ourselves to be our true selves so to speak Desire is only a problem when it's coming with uh, with um, attachment, a need, so to speak, when it's like an essential need and the belief that this desire will bring about happiness in my life or peace or love. Yeah. That the, that the desire, the achievement of the desired thing or person or achievement kind of will bring about the happiness that I'm seeking then desire is an, is an obstacle. But even when we're just simply ourselves and we're enjoying this given avatar with its human faculties that are, that are great, great tools for enjoying the world, it still comes with preferences, we could say. Yeah. You know? So these can be confused for desires. You know, We are yeah. all different. That's the, that's the great paradox, isn't it? We are all the same as consciousness or we share all one being i say sometimes yep and then this one being expresses itself in all these different forms including these all these different human forms which i call avatars usually you know? and my avatar comes with different preferences or desires than yours and there's nothing wrong with that i know you're having a tea i just had a coffee half an hour ago so it's a nice little brownie because I'm enjoying it, you know. There was a time I was restraining myself from coffee because it's bad, and I'm a yogi, and and now I'm just enjoying my coffee, and it's part of my avatar that it just enjoys coffee, but it doesn't stop me from being myself, or it's not an obstacle of being myself. And it's it's with all others. Desires are fine. It's just that they're not attached to this idea of a separate me that needs the fulfillment of the desire to be happy because that's where the the confusion usually is mm -hmm. in the mind in the conditioned mind happiness is associated with the fulfillment of what i want mm -hmm. the moment i fulfill a desire it's like a you no know, pebble drops in the in the in the like a little stone drops in a in a little pond or something and in this moment I free myself from the need to become something or to achieve something or to, to get something. And in this split second, I'm desireless yeah. of achieving my desire. And there it is. The mm -hmm. happiness of myself is just shining through. It's been, it's been just waiting there. And then the mind, I call it the clown, often uh, comes in <laughs> afterwards and comes on the stage and and takes the applause. No, it's like, hey, you know, here I brought you, I brought you the happiness through this cappuccino or, or this you know, brownie. But actually the happiness just bubbled up from our inmost center, no? from just being being free of desire for a split second, the happiness was there. No? And then is this wrong translation, this association of the clown with the thing that makes me believe that the desire the desired thing was making me happy. Mm. So desire is fine as long 
it's freed from the attachment of the belief and the feeling of being a separate me. Mm. That's very well said. Yeah. So it's the freedom of the condition of um, either attaining or not attaining said desire, right? It's sort of like preference less in that aspect. Like no preferences, desires come and go, but it's like, it's whatever, <laughs> right? Freedom is, is that the essence of freedom you're saying? It's like uh, the show still goes on in our lives. We still drink our tea and our coffee, but if I don't get my tea or the coffee doesn't come, it doesn't affect uh, that vantage point, that throne of joy and peace and happiness. As myself, exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm enjoying the tea as long as I get it, but I'm not falling in despair if you don't. When I don't get it. Yeah. That's mm. true. That's true for everything, basically. And that's a tricky one, of course, because the this idea of a separate me, the so-called ego sometimes has this has these qualities to tricking us that it's just especially in in teachings like or sharings like mine where where enjoyment of life is part of the human journey and it's not just an overcoming of this human form to get into some moksha uh, in the other world that you've seen probably in my videos so this is not our game yes overcoming this illusion or this ignorance of being a separate me but then this vehicle this avatar is, is such a great tool for enjoyment and if at that time, so to speak, there's still traces or residues of separation in me, they will kind of take advantage of that joy that is growing. The happiness is growing with the dissolution of the separation, so to speak. So then the ego can come back in through the back door. And it's like, I'm just enjoying. Mm -hmm. I don't need, you know, I'm just enjoying. And that is can be very true for relationships or anything where the true freedom is a true I can but I don't need I I or I I love you I don't need you no yeah that's what I like to say it's a beautiful saying in a relationship no? it's like I I can be with you with my whole heart I can enjoy our our being together our our celebration of being ourselves together and really seeing I can love someone without needing someone because there is the understanding that the, the joy, the happiness, the love that we're experiencing together is not in form. It's not yeah. in the thing. It's not in this, in this avatars. No, it's not in, it's, a, it's so to speak in the essence of our meeting yeah. where we really, so our love, if our bodies are together or not, it will not change. Mm -hmm. you know? As long as we have, we can enjoy the things of the world together, but the actual joy, the happiness in the same way like with the cappuccino, it's actually not in yeah. the partner as separate me. And this is the real celebration to come together intimately. Sharing life with, with someone intimately is actually exactly that um, the solution of two separate persons wow. and there we experience so it's a pass also it's a pass no relationship is a yoga and mm. my teacher on that side mm -hmm. very much agree, no? it brings up a lot of stuff but it also gives us this inkling if we don't know that this glimpse of wow everyone knows that really who, who had some form of real intimate relationship there is this there is no more other at some point no? mm. just making love it's you know? making just, love that's it <laughs> you know, the, the, this is the idea there is this apparent union which is just actually the dropping of the idea of us being two separate people yeah that's very aptly said you just described very well uh, unconditional love right there <laughs> that's the whole gist of this thing unconditional love mm. yeah yeah and that makes the it's sort of ironic, right? It's like when I don't need you per se, and you don't need me, but we still, we still are together. It makes the relationship even sweeter. It seems it's 
like when there is no, I don't, I'm not trying to get anything from you per se, and you're not trying to get anything from me. There's something so sweet in that dance, you know? And that's what it is. It's a dance. It's just you're dancing with each other in a way. Unconditional love can be seen as a dance. And you just, you described it very well. Yeah. And it's like you said, not just with people either, with all things. When you love everything about this life, it becomes a dance. You dance with it all. And uh, yeah, you go with the flow of that I, dance. I use, I use the dance also. Sometimes we rest and sometimes we dance. I, <laughs> I like yeah. the puffer of a dance. You know, if I may add that, especially in relationships, it's just an expression of our freedom. You see, our, our nature, this being ourselves, is an expression of freedom, consciousness, in my understanding and in my experience, is expressing continuously its freedom. Consciousness doesn't create the world and these people and these avatars out of a mistake, which is sometimes or very often in religion understood in this way. Yeah. It's like a mistake that has to be overcome, the original sin and la la la. Yeah. Mm. All of that. No, it's a pure expression out of joy, out of freedom to to create, to play, to dance. No, the only thing that is in the way is this idea of me being a separate person that mm. brings all these limitations, all these filters, all you no. Know? So when when that is when I'm stripped of that, then I can express that freedom. And and to do that. On our own is already amazing to discover the peace of our of our being. But then very often, in my experience, and I also some some teachers that I admire, like like also mystics uh, like Thomas Merton, who wrote this uh, beautiful book, No Man is an Island. Very often we withdraw, we go into kind of seclusion, we find ourselves, and then eventually, when that is really authentic, this recognition and it kind of landed, you know, in our humanness. Then there is this wish to to go out and express it and celebrate that again, and that is so much more fun. Yeah, with so-called other people, with friends, with yeah. your partner, you know, and then to to ah uh, to go out and and from our freedom, exactly not out of this need, from our freedom, let's stay, you know, let's be together and yeah. renew that freedom every day, and there is no. No, no, no strings attached. It's just freedom expressing itself. And that makes us so happy because it's, it's the expression of the happiness of the freedom that we are. Mm -hmm. Well said again, unending freedom, unending creativity, unending novelty. Unending. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. So sweet. So beautiful. Um, already getting speechless here but uh <laughs> so maybe to somebody that has no idea what we're talking about right <laughs> to, let's say to a layman right to someone that has no idea because i know what you're saying i understand and they say this that all sounds great right that sounds wonderful but i just don't feel it are there modalities or practices you would recommend to be able to see this to feel this sense of freedom and to be able to dance the dance of life like where do we start, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. How do we start along this path? I'm not sure if I would say we start. Somehow we get started. Mm. <laughs> Somehow. Somehow, some of us, because I wouldn't say per se, of course, in the end, for every limited version, apparent limited version of consciousness, the wish is to, to, to dissolve back into its nature and forget, uh, forget this um, limitation that we put up on ourselves, so to speak, as the game. No? So eventually everyone wants to be free, no, no doubt. But I wouldn't say that um, even essentially it's for everyone, there, there is a, a limited happiness also in being rich, achieving things. Uh, some people, many people have that sense that they're actually quite happy without actually really maybe getting deeply consciously in touch with, with what they are. They always are, of course, but it's always translated or filtered by the mind. So they kind of never really seek for that for that pure 
consciousness, if we want yeah. to call it. Way, no? And that can be to some degree a, a very fulfilled life. So, so not everyone becomes a seeker, as we know, so mm. to speak, seeking for freedom or enlightenment or, or whatever we want to call it. No? And then there are some, like us, where something happens. You see, for me, it was I had like a first career. I've been a manager in the in the music business, you know, a big shot and, and la la la, and, and I uh, kind of created an ego which somehow I didn't get so much when I was a kid. So so I I became someone, no. And then I then I quit the whole thing pretty early. Um, kind of when I achieved what I what I never dreamt of, I could achieve in a way. Something in me was saying this is. This is kind of not it. I, you know, I had like, I had the job, I had the the girl, I had the dog, I had a penthouse in Berlin, I had a super Audi, you know, mm. I had kind of fulfilled all what the world was telling me what will bring happiness to me, because I grown up quite simple and poor in a way. But something in me was like, no, this is not it. No, yeah. so I quit and I left Berlin and I said, I'm never going to go back. I'm, I'm moving to South Africa. I fell in love in, with South Africa the year before. And it's like, I'm I'm checking out of, of, of this nonsense, no? I think I was 28 or something. I was like 29. It's like, um, this is this is not it. But I didn't know what it is. So I went to South Africa and I just lived a happy, ignorant life. I served yeah. and I, I, you know. I drank and I smoked and I, I was chasing happiness still in, in the things that are not in work, but in the, the normal stuff. And a friend of mine, good friend of mine from, from England in Berlin at that time, we were hanging out a lot in the gardens and at that time smoking a joint here and there, you see, and, and having this big philosophical talks, so, you know, about the world, a great guy, you know. And he gave me, for my departure, he gave me a, a book, a gift. And I didn't even really much look at it. I packed it away in like half year in or something in South Africa, finally after a serve. And somehow I remembered, I opened it, you know, and I, and I opened the thing and it's like, this is the important shit, my friend. Because in these philosophical talks where it is, you know, what's important and la la la. This is the important shit, my friend. Siddhartha, Hermann Hesse. I don't know if you, if you oh, yeah. read it. I haven't read it, but I know it. It was a moment for me. You see, somehow, I, I I read this book, and it just instantly mm. reminded me what this whole game is about. Wow! And everything shifted, and then I had no idea how to approach it, but somehow something clicked deeply. Something remembered and known. Okay. So it was the end of my hippie South African life, and kind of from there, from there I took the steps. So, what did I do? No, <laughs> it just it just came to me. No, it was my yeah. own vision, you could say it's, it's consciousness. So, I would say that some of us just are happily about to go to live a life of ignorance. With some limited happiness, I feel it's it's actually possible. Not everyone, you know. And some of us have that spark within us. You could call it karma or whatever, no. But there is this spark that that still knows, and that will attract someone, a situation, a book, a person, yep. something in us that gets that, you no, know, that and enlightens that spark. And then from there, this little fire, and then it finds its way. There's mm. so many so many ways then to to get going mm -hmm. yeah i feel that it seems like to you and from other people i spoke to there seems to be like a initiation whether it is through a book or a person or some kind of traumatic event or just something something that happens in someone's life where they switch up something that leads them down the path of there's got to be another way and and they find the other way and go with it there's something and i think it is grace i think it's grace that comes in and it's not up to us 
I guess the only thing that is up to us per se is to just be open enough. Just be open, stay curious, stay wondrous, and then it'll happen. But maybe even the opening isn't up to us either, you know? Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> who, who chooses to be open, right? At that yeah. stage. Yeah, I don't know. That we really have to kind of see that to this avatar, as long as it believes to be a, a separate person, there's no freedom. It's just programming. It's just conditioning. Mm -hmm. The freedom always belongs to our nature, to consciousness. Mm. The avatar as a separate thing is the illusion. It never, it never had this separate reality for itself so to speak no so mm -hmm. it never made any decisions and that's the clown then it's like oh i've been so good in my job I've, I, I've been such a great entrepreneur or such a i'm such a super enlightened being you know i did i did uh, kriya yoga myself into enlightenment i ah yeah. oh, you know all of that no that if it's authentic understanding we see that this is all nonsense of course yeah. <laughs> yeah. never there was never such a thing in existence you know this separate person it's just a dream character and there's just this one consciousness moving through all of us and then yeah and some of us that's why i like also the word um the term intelligence in a way for consciousness no? it's this intelligence that even if we try to think about it it blows our mind because mm -hmm. it's just no, this this limitation of our mind of our brain in a way stays. We cannot think our our way into consciousness into this yeah. vast intelligence, right? But we have this knowing in us about this intelligence. No, mm -hmm. and this intelligence in this mysterious, beautiful way organizes all these eight billion avatars and these eight trillion animals and every. Everything is in its absolute perfection. No? It's just all so, once we see it, no, it's like, it's mind-blowing. No, you're just in awe when you really see how the world actually really, that every little piece fits exactly. No, there is this. Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, it kind of broke up there again. Sorry. <laughs> but we just left <laughs> off about the perfection of it all and how every little piece fits in and it's very true it's all like a puzzle you know it's a giant giant puzzle every little piece fits into the puzzle and we are part of that puzzle yeah exactly yeah it's quite beautiful this, this intelligence organizes this all and coming back to your question it's kind of uh, It brings us a bit to this destiny question, no? Is it is it is it is it all predestined? No? Am, am I gonna is it is the whole book written yeah. for this avatar in a way? No, very, very I don't feel so. There is there is this freedom, as we said. You know? There is this this expression of continuous freedom. But we could say that it's kind of preordained, you no? Know? There is this this intelligence that kind of knows and 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 kind of it's kind of almost unavoidable for, for, for some souls that they will seek freedom from these limitations. Where for others, you can talk to them, you can give them all the books, you can send them to, to all the satsangs, and they will just, they won't bother somehow. Mm. Somehow it doesn't, doesn't ignite, no? So there is this, this organization, this, this intelligence that is kind of knowing and, and that... In many non-dual teachings, so-called non-dual teachings, there's no room for a soul, if I might sneak that in here. But um, for me, there is, and it is this intelligence in a way. It's not something separate. No, it's not like a separate thing, the soul, but it's this intelligence that kind of knows all of our dream journeys. You know, We all walked many, 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 many dream journeys here on this planet, and God knows, maybe in other in other ways no so there is this intelligence that kind of puts together 
this like okay i've dreamt there and i've dreamt there and i met this one and uh, and that all so there is this idea of old souls no the, so so some have tried so much and have been enjoying so much and experiencing so much that they eventually are kind of possibly wishing to experience something else and just things and then there is pull this pull back to myself as consciousness no? so otherwise it would be all random you know then everyone would have kind of the same path if there would be just this consciousness and 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 then this apparent separate entity there would be no no point why I would be attracted to some particular person, for example, or to some particular past, no? Because I I love everyone. We love everyone. If you love, then you love everyone. So why would you, you know, feel this sweetness with that person or with that teacher and with that one not? No. So there is this this intelligence that puts it all together, and this intelligence is like a what I call the soul. It's like this this seed it's like in seed form in potential and that's why it's not predestined in that way there is still this freedom there is a potential in that seed when we kind of come back into this new dream form and this new dream avatar and there is this potential in it and for some there is this great potential for freedom to come back to freedom and for others there is this great potential to become a super duper entrepreneur and and kind of become a billionaire and and find limited happiness in that yeah that's all perfect exactly <laughs> that's what my teacher's teacher maharachi always said to ramdas you see i've been with ramdas a bit together so probably and always Ram, when ramdas had a bit of his rumble no yeah. Then that's what you always said, Ram does. Don't you still get it? It's all perfect. Mm -hmm. So true. Now, you knew Ram Das personally? Yeah, I've been I've been with him um, a few times together. I'm very blessed in, in his house and in Hawaii. Oh, uh, I revere Ram Das as well, uh, very much so. Indian Karoli Baba. Um, now, how would you describe who Ramdas is? You knowing him personally, like who who is this being? Why why do we love him so much? Why do I love him so much? Like, how could you describe why Ramdas is so important for you? See, Ram Das is this embodiment of pure love. When I when I came to Ram Das, when I was invited the first time, I was not seeking anymore. I, I thought I, I had I had found what I was looking for. I was I was happy. I was very peaceful. So there there was not in a way uh, that he taught me something in words. Mostly we were just sitting together and in silence and looking into our eyes, our eyes closed. And I've been just bathing in his love. Mm -hmm. In his love, in Maharaji's love, his guru, you know, in Karoli Baba, our love, essentially. Yeah. So Ramdas is this expression of love. And that's He was so great in words for for most of his life, you know, all his talks, no. Mm -hmm. But somehow this stroke later, no, kind of pulled that away from him, no. Yeah. For many years, he had great difficulties to articulate himself, no. So, and he expressed that also with me. It kind of forced him even deeper in, no, to deeper surrender and, and to find that okay, there is even 
there is even more to that, no? to, of more of letting go. So, so I feel for those 20 years of what it was after the stroke, there was this constant surrender, this, 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 this letting go of myself and, and surrendering myself to his guru. And, his, and in this case, to Maharaj, which is, of course, just pure consciousness. In me. So, and then he, he just vibrated this love. Yeah. It's just, you know, yeah. We were just, we were, I just loved him so much. Mm. It's how to put into words. It's weird too because I love Ram Das as well. I never met him. It's like how can That's I? Right. That's how, right. How is that possible? But I feel so much love from this guy just from recordings or reading his words. I'm like, wow. I feel the love from that. I can't imagine in person but he would probably say it doesn't matter <laughs> right or something along those lines as long as you feel it that's all that matters and uh yeah you see it's not ram das love it's universal love it's yeah. unconditional love mm -hmm. that had the chance to land deeply in his avatar so to speak Mm. so the avatar was vibrating that love but this love is not limited to this avatar even mm. though it was deeply you no know, penetrated the love penetrated his avatar deeply it was not limited to this avatar so the love this in a way it's one universal love but every guru every truly authentic teacher that has not only recognized or realized that but really what i call embodied or integrated no mm -hmm. to into all our cells almost we could say that it really penetrates all of our being yeah then it comes because this universal love then comes in a way it comes with a particular flavor. Know that why Ram Das has a bit of a different flavor than Ramana Maharshi or something. Mm. It's the same universal love, and and the love is the same. But so and that flavor, that is the the magic in a way that remains. Yeah. It's like the love is still here, even now when we speak about it, we can feel it in our hearts. Now he's here. Yeah. It's with us. This, this this pure love is there, and there it has this. This Ram Das flavor and and Ram Das flavor a bit mixed maybe with Maharaji also because he's always there when there is Ram Das no mm -hmm. and and these guys are just such amazing expressions of pure love so so it has in that sense then nothing to do anymore with this physical form mm -hmm. yeah mm. and so he's still available to us as a teacher exactly yeah and that's what he would say about Maharaji is that even after you left his body, he actually felt closer to him. And uh, man, I kind of feel that after Ram Das left his body in 2020, was it 2020, 2019? Um, 2019, December 2019. I remember exactly. Uh, I was in Tiro Roman and I felt it exactly. As yeah, so. it's like, it hit me too. I got in touch and I got, and exactly, and it's it, it enhanced our relationship. It's exactly like yeah it's like um yeah so i think that's the the testament to what we just said it's like you don't this love this universal love doesn't have to be constrained to a body and if anything once uh once the flavor of the body transitions it gets greater you know somehow some way this love enters into the beings that it was loved by and um it's like a transmission, you know, I see it almost as like a transmission through time from guru to disciple and it just keeps going. It doesn't end. It's a never ending love with an infinite amount of flavors. <laughs> the flavors are, which are us, our avatars. And that's the beauty of it, man. It never ends. And, uh, hallelujah. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of it, man. Yeah. And there we see, if I may say that for me, because what I what I'm particularly grateful for for Rondas and Maharaji, when I was the second time with him, there was one one particular moment in time where he kind of this transmission, you see, which is just the recognition and consciousness in my understanding but it feels like a transmission noise he 
it's undescribable. He, he brought me into my humanness. You see, it was always for me, it was kind of easy to, to float up here. You know, I was my, my center was kind of above my head, actually. And I had great difficulties to accepting my humanness all of my life mm-hmm. somehow. And then, so I've been also, of course, in the search of enlightenment, attracted by this, you know, get out of here and stuff. So that was not such a big thing, but to be human. That's the that's the real deal, man. To be this consciousness in the human form and to live that yep. freedom, to live and express that love in every moment, and to not buy into the fear of the conditioning of the mind and and the conditioned feelings, you know. And he really transmitted to me. It's like I'm giving you my guru, boom, and it just hit my heart. And I had like an operation for one week. I had this open chest, you know, and this. This, this love was pouring, you know, and mm. it really kind of pulled me into my body. And then I felt really, that's where the journey really began wow. in this in this form, you see. So this, and then to come in a way to this understanding. And he is the expression of that for me. And it's in a way what I'm sharing, what's somehow evolving somehow just by talking about these things, that that this consciousness, this pure consciousness, and our conscious, our our humanness are actually one. Mm. That the true non-dual understanding is not that there is this non-dual consciousness, you know, and this all here, the world, this body, all of that is not real, right? It's true in a way. That's not what, what because that consciousness already knows that. It's <laughs> yeah. already free. It's been always free. It doesn't, it doesn't need the human body to recognize that, right? It knows itself. It always knows itself. You know? But to bring consciousness and humanness together, there you have then this pure love pouring out and, and really emanating and, and like a flu, no? this perfume, no? Mm. <laughs> touching touching the people and, and seeing that potential that is in us as consciousness to to live through this avatar mm-hmm. as this as this expression of the pure love yeah well said wow yeah through this avatar through the body not in spite of the body we live fluidly in all the comings and goings of our body And yeah, that's uh, something I feel Ramdas embodied. I think one of his main teachings was just him being him. He was very vulnerable in all of his lectures. He was very human. And I think that's what he ultimately brought to the West is a sort of humanity to spirituality. And he didn't make it over lofty, even though sometimes he would get out there. But he would always joke. Like I feel as though in his talks, he knew when he was getting a little too out there and he'd throw a joke in there to kind of come back down and ground, you know, that's what I appreciate about Ram Dass so much is uh, his comedic sense and not taking himself too seriously or his teachings too seriously, you know, keeping right. us all grounded. Uh, I think that was a, a big part of his, his life altogether. And what he brought to the West overall was just um, being relatable essentially just being relatable and making spirituality relatable for all of us yes yeah just walking each other home that's it (laughs) exactly yeah Yeah, and this is you know this is this is this exactly what i said in the beginning just being myself yeah that's why it's my my and you see when he when he asked me basically to teach no this this when he kind of gave me maharaji and 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 he kind of told me you know this is what you're gonna do no and i was like well what are you talking about it was it was <laughs> just i was like i'm scared you know what, what are you talking about like i can and you see it took many many years until this now starts somehow to to happen no because i i i, I so I told him, I, I, I'm scared. I, I've been, you know, going even on a stage was was freaking me out, you know, speaking to people or something. Like, that's good, that's good. Speak it, speak it, speak your truth. No, no script, no nothing. 
just speak your heart just speak mm. speak from your soul that's in a way your gift that was given to you so Wonderful. express exactly where you are just be who you are and it's all not such a big fuss no? and that's was that in the same moment that you spoke about before? Yeah, it was this transmission. It kind of it it, it, wow. it. it was like a darshan. It was a big darshan, and it was really a, It was. I mean, he kind of gave me my vocation no, at that time. Yeah. But it took many, many more years. You see, time doesn't matter. It's not that I jumped out and came out of that that uh, that meeting with him or that retreat with him, and then it's like, okay, now I build my website and blah blah blah. None mm-hmm. of that was happening, and it's still not there. Now it's maybe manifesting a bit. So it was just a big. He just saw me, you see. Mm. And, but I had, um, and I still have, of course work to do in that sense to to be really human yeah. to see that there is no separation between this one consciousness and mm-hmm. our humanness and to live up to that and then and that's what i what i say now in these meetings and being that we're holding and that's what people felt with ram das and hopefully we can also somehow share that as being friends of Ram Das to with words or not, that it's just one shared being, right? And and yeah, and he always said that like my thing, I remember one talk of him, somehow he comes up and he's like, I know you everyone has so many great talents. Somehow my thing is talking, no? So so I do my thing and somehow Maharaji thought in me, so he made me write this book and now I'm standing here and talking talking to you guys. It doesn't make me different, it doesn't make me special, it doesn't make me and that's exactly what I'm feeling, you know. Somehow he gave me that because somehow I have this mind to speak about the unspeakable. No, it's a it's a very foolish task, no, and very humbling. Every time I get somewhere, you know, we have a meeting, it's like, what the heck? You no, know? how I'm gonna <laughs> talk about that which we cannot speak about. So uh-huh. silly. No? Yeah, but some of us have this this silly task, and he gave me that one. So I'm trying to to live up to that now. No, but if we are a plumber or a father or a mother or you know a caretaker, or it's all one shared being, just try to live up to that. Mm. No, amen. And you're doing it with the podcast, and it's and it's and it's you you you're sharing it in that way. No, it's beautiful. I'm it trying. Really which form it takes, right? No, but mm-hmm. I can feel you, man. It's beautiful. <laughs> you're, I you're can feel you too. Your heart, your heart into into this. It's it's very wonderful. Mm. Just going with the flow. Just doing yeah. what I enjoy. You know, this is just truly what I enjoy. Coming on here and speaking to people like you, and um, just going with that. I I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know what I'm doing, to be honest with you. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's right. Same here. Same here, Gary. Just Absolutely. having some fun here, folks. Yeah. But um, I think this is a great, great point, Gary. You, you, you ask like where to start. A few questions ago, I think where where is yep. this start? Mm-hmm. I think it's your answer. It, you know, just follow your joy. Yeah. Just follow your heart. You know, we all have have this. We just 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 one of those expressions of this one consciousness of this one love and it's kind of imprinted into our own hearts right mm. where where this true joy is no not this need no not this need of the needy me of the separate me but we all know deep down in our hearts what really would bring joy to us mm. what what how we can really express our talents and if we follow that there's nothing that can go wrong Mm-hmm. Of course, fear might come up. No, how I'm gonna make my living, uh, how this is gonna work out, and all this conditioned stuff will pour out. No, but if we really follow our joy, then the universe kind of aligns. Yeah, with that, mm-hmm. sure, effortlessly. Almost. Yep. Mm-hmm. Amen. Effortless living, truly. Yeah, I would have never imagined that I have over 200 podcast episodes wow. at this point but it's effortless like you said it just kind of like just happens I, f- I find a person send him an email and here we are i'm in a zoom call so this is this is my dharma at this point 
but I feel as though in other people's life, it'll be the same thing. Just effortless action. You know, one just becomes the effortless being and it just becomes a dance. Like we said, you just dance with whatever that is. And uh, it's very beautiful. And you get lost in the moment. You get lost in the doing of it. One becomes the doing. And uh, I think that's the essence of life. You kind of like live and die into your dharma. And that's it. That's the that's the magic. That's the magic sauce. You just, you just get lost in the, the humanness, the human work, you could say. The dharma, I think I already said. And uh, yeah, it's just it's beautiful. It, it's, it's, it's very beautiful. The journey is the destination, as they say. And uh, I don't know, I'm kind of running out of things to... <laughs> things to describe it as so um it's just beautiful man i really appreciate you coming on here i can sense your understanding i sense the love i sense the transmission from ramdas through time and space that's what's very strange i think i mentioned that about ramdas's words how it hits me and i'm like i don't even know the guy but when i come on here and talk to people like you I just, um, I feel that transmission and I'm, we're not even, in, you're in Guatemala, I'm in Boston. Like, how is that even possible? That's how I know that we are all one being and there is no separation. Yes. Like yes. there is non, we're, we're a non-local being and we're somehow all connected in the ethers somewhere, somehow, some way, I'm not even going to try and describe it. But this, doing this is a reminder and a testament to me that this love truly does unite us all. And it may sound corny and cliche to say, but I don't care. I'll say it because I feel in the moment right now, this love is real. And if anything, it's, it's realer than real. <laughs> and uh, it's the only thing that is real in the end. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's what remains, you know, this yeah. avatar or this, all this fuss about all the things that apparently, you know, they all go, they yeah. all go. This form goes, your form goes, Ramdas form goes, went. Yeah. But the love remains. Yeah. Remains as that which is real. And I feel this is a very, very important point to remember in our lives when we sometimes get hooked, you know, about things, you know, that apparently are very important. To remember that which remains in a way. What 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 remains when I live leave this? human experience no what am i taking with me it's just mm -hmm. that all that remains so and it's here it's here now as around us would say no? and mm -hmm. it's not it's not even that it unites us it's it is our shared being exactly yeah. as you said it's we're not even connected in that sense we are that you see yeah exactly exactly because connection implies two things <laughs> exactly points to things connect yeah. you know? so that we don't even need to reconnect we just have to let go of not being connected and mm -hmm. there it is you now there, there it is, is. And, and that's what i find in this i mean it's my first interview uh so to, so but uh, there are these zoom calls no and i do them one as one and in, in the group and 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 every time you are like like now no Boston, Guatemala, it's all it's all irrelevant. We just you can feel it exactly as you mm -hmm. see. We're meeting as one shared being beyond space and time. Why on the movie on the screen we're appearing here as two people, no meeting as two people having a conversation while in reality it's just love loving itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Ramdas is with us and Maharaji is with us, you know, and we're just hanging out together in this love. Exactly. Dancing the dance. I love that you that you framed it like that. It's exactly yeah. it's dancing the dance. We're all dancing the dance. Wow. Like Jesus said, if I may sneak Jesus in here, because Please it's do. <laughs> a very uh, another one of my masters, so to speak. And what did he say? When you, what what shall we say when they ask us when we when we look for God or how would you describe God? When they ask you, tell them, it's or he's movement and rest or movement and repose. And this I find very important because 
It's expressing this truth. It's not only the repose. It's not only the rest. The Eastern philosophies have a strong tendency to the stillness, not to the unchanging, non-moving. And of course, this is where we find, so to speak, the fundamentals, you know, the, the, the rock upon which we can build our lives, that we can dance. But once that rock is, is found, so to speak, or rediscovered, then it's this dance, this movement, and it goes together. It mm -hmm. goes together. And, the, and one is not better than the other one. Yeah. It's just that the dance usually doesn't work without having found that stillness, that rock, and being solid in that, so to speak, because otherwise we lose ourselves in the dance as being important by itself. No, But once the we're standing firmly the, on the ground of, of, of being, then it's this beautiful dance and we can, we can dance and jump into it and enjoy it and make mistakes and be stupid and nothing changes, but everything can be enjoyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's in a way what I wish for us, you know, for us uh, foolish foolish ones that we that we start living that here also now and it's also why I have kind of submitted to 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 sharing now because I feel it's coming. You know this they were moving kind of beyond also that only this idea of that this enlightenment is something out here and, and then we leave our bodies behind. We can we get we're starting it's coming kind of we're getting it. I feel we're here for it, you know? Mm. That that we of course, we don't dismiss this. We, it's very important that we find that stillness within us that that can then from there we can we can move as that. You know? But then that we make that happen here, man. That we that we live it here now and mm -hmm. dance it together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds like uh, sounds like heaven on earth to me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh if that ain't heaven i don't know what is yeah man but ultimately the kingdom of heaven is within another jesus quote <laughs> that's the most important aspect we find it within and then we bring it without first one could say yeah he said it's within but he also said if you want to find it, it's not it's not here it's not there it's not it's everywhere or something like that. It's another quote of us. You know? So first, exactly as you say, we find it within. We find that unchanging, non-moving, eternal essence, which we could call loving awareness and consciousness, or the ground of being. You know? So we go within. But when we go within and we, we find it, then it's like an explosion and within is everywhere. <laughs> Not yeah. within anymore, no. It's the whole screen of the whole creation. Yeah. It's like a point in time and space, apparently, this eye of the needle that he spoke about, right? But once you go through it, mm. that it's all around and within you, it's everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen, man. Um, yeah. I don't have anything else to say, to be honest with you. Uh, that might be a good note to wrap it up at. Do you have anything else you want to say? No. Yeah. I think we've said all we can say. And ultimately, what we say never does it justice. <laughs> it never adds up. <laughs> That's the joke, as we said. It's sort of comical in that way. Um, but those yeah. who have... Ears, let them hear, or something. Exactly. Right? Exactly. People, people will feel, as as you said, around us is you know this transmission, if we want to call it that way. Mm. It's it's wrapped up in a miraculous way in in a video recording, <laughs> mm -hmm. and made reach the people's heart. Thank you for. Thank you, Adrian. Um, yeah, keep doing your thing, man. Seriously. Um, like I said, you just have a very warm spirit, very welcoming and very relatable. So keep doing your thing. I wish you all the best for the future. And that's it. Peace and love to you. And peace and love to anyone that listened this long as well. 
Um, right. Yeah, you were part of the journey as well, even though they're not technically here with us, but in a way, they are transcending time. You know, this uh, this love is non-local, but it's also non-linear. So, yeah, it's in a way, it bends time, space and time. Love is is like that, man. It's, it's sort of magical. So, yeah, thank you, everybody that listened this long. And I will put all your um, information down in the description for people to check you out. That's it. Peace and love to you, man. Peace and love. Thank you, Gary. Much, thank much you. love. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.